coming up our conversation with Alison Santafonte about Ukraine and Russia and what it's teaching us about gender roles. I want to highlight for you a new article published on the FRC blog, frcblog.com by Ariel Del Turco. It's called Real Men Don't Bomb Women and Children. They Protect Them. Making some of the similar points, you can again find that article at frcblog.com and encourage you to check that out. Now, this week is a big week in Central America. On Wednesday, Guatemala, Guatemala was declared the pro-life capital of Ibero-America during a special event in which the government of the country also instituted the Day of, for Life and Family and inaugurated a monument in what from now on will be called the Patio of Life, the famous National Palace of Culture. And pro-life leaders from the United States are there to support the efforts and plan for the future. And one of those on the ground is our own David Clausen, the director of FRC's Center for Biblical Worldview, who joins me now from Guatemala to tell us all about it. David, good to see you. Hey, great to see you as well, Joseph. Now tell us what's been happening. Why did you go to Guatemala this week and uh, what can you report? Yeah, it's been a really exciting time here in Guatemala City, uh, the capital of Guatemala. Uh, so on Wednesday, the president, uh, Alejandro Jumati, uh, had a huge uh, ceremony, a big event at the National Palace, uh, where he officially declared uh, March 9th the uh, day for life and family. Uh, he had a, a big ceremony there. They unveiled a statue uh, that declared Guatemala uh, the pro-life capital of Ibro America, uh, which is just the, the central the Spanish-speaking world. And so it's just really, really encouraging to be here in uh, parallel with the official festivities at the palace uh, the uh, Iber Americo Congress for Life and Family held their sixth annual meeting, uh, which is just a really neat uh, a gathering uh, that happens every year of Spanish speaking leaders from across the regions coming together to collaborate, to strategize on the pro-life issue. Uh, just a couple of moments ago, Joseph, I heard from a former presidential candidate, I think from Costa Rica. We heard from the foreign minister earlier today from Guatemala. Uh, the president came and addressed the assembly uh, yesterday morning, uh, the day after the big event at his palace. And so it's just really, really exciting uh, to see the pro-life, the international pro-life movement uh, really gaining momentum and speed in this part of the country. Now, those of us who are in the United States are certainly aware of the debates around abortion and related life issues here. Uh, we certainly know that abortion is going to be an issue in other parts of the world, but we're not really familiar with them because most of us don't track them closely. Based on what you have experienced and watched and heard this week, how similar or different are the conversations happening in Central America and South America compared to what we're experiencing in the United States? Right. So I think what's so important, Joseph, what happened here in Guatemala is the context and the context over the last 18 months kind of in this part of the world has actually been a liberalization of abortion laws. Uh, so just uh, about a month ago, actually, the nation of Colombia uh, uh, liberalized their abortion laws. Uh, Mexico last year, their Supreme Court struck down pro-life laws in two states, effectively paving the way uh, for abortion on demand. Uh, Argentina last year, uh, despite their most famous citizen, Pope Francis, urging them uh, not to liberalize their abortion laws, they went ahead and did that last year. And so the, the context of the trends so far uh, in the last two years or so have been seeing abortion laws being liberalized. And that's why what happened just a couple of days ago here in Guatemala was a very big deal. Uh, the president, and it wasn't just the president, uh, the entire Congress was behind this too. We heard from the president of the Congress uh, who also wanted a monument uh, recognizing families and life uh, unveiled at their Capitol building. So I th we did that earlier this morning. So there's actually two monuments here in Guatemala, Guatemala City, uh, recognizing the importance of life and family. And so it's just really exciting to see and to hear the president, Joseph, he, he, he made it very clear uh, that there, he's under pressure uh, from uh, the Western world and from people in the United States uh, to, to liberalize abortion laws. And he said, I'm not going to do it. 
uh, even though the foreign aid and foreign assistance often comes with strings attached, he said the people of Guatemala are a religious people. Part of their heritage and culture is respecting life, respecting family, and that he was not going to be bullied uh, by this cultural imperialism uh, coming out of Western countries. So it's just incredibly encouraging uh, to see the courage and the boldness uh, from the president, but from his whole cabinet and from congressional leaders as well. I want to get into in a moment some of that bullying you refer to and how the West is trying, and specifically the United States, is trying to influence other countries. But you talk about the trends there, about how there are several Central and South American countries who are moving in the wrong direction on the life issue. And we know that Central and South America are largely Catholic. That's been their religious heritage, the majority of it at least. What are we to make of the trends to being more open, more accepting of abortion? Is that signaling a, uh, a loss of religious influence, a loss of influence of the Catholic Church in that part of the world, despite the fact that, for example, in Argentina, uh, that is the home of the Pope? So one of the things, you know, Joseph, you and I have talked about is the, the lack of the decreasing biblical worldview in the United States. 51% of Americans think they have a biblical worldview when it's only about 6%. Uh, in the church, 81% think they have a biblical worldview. It's only 21%. Uh, the leaders that I've talked to uh, just in the last couple of days from Ecuador and Peru and uh, Bolivia and Brazil, they've told me they're seeing the same thing, uh, that uh, there is a growing secularism, there's a growing syncretism, and that the uh, the churches uh, in this area are, are, are on the, the decline as far as their influence goes. And so I actually had an opportunity to address uh, some of these international delegates and talk to them about biblical worldview. And uh, there was a lot of resonance, Joseph. So it's really interesting to see what we're seeing in the United States, they're seeing uh, in their countries as well. And so that was one of the uh, exciting things that I was able to do down here is to engage and collaborate with some of these leaders. And how do we go back to our countries and address pastors? How do we encourage pastors to speak to these issues? Because pastors in these Latin and Central American countries um, are they're also increasingly nervous to touch some of these issues for they don't want to be perceived as too political and whatnot. And so one of the things that we really were with all these leaders from around the region is how do we go back and encourage our pastors uh, not to be political, uh, just to be biblical, to be faithful to God's word. And I think that was a key takeaway that I have from my time here in Guatemala. Tom Friedman, many years back, wrote a book called The Earth is Flat, about the flattening of the world's economy and how everyone be, has become, and we've seen this uh, in many ways in recent years with China and, and now with Russia, the way that the Earth's economies are connected. But do you think it's also true that as our economies and our markets have become connected and in many ways interdependent, that our values are also beginning to become shared as well as the West's influence economically extends beyond economics uh, and, and starting to affect uh, worldview and politics and the way that we just see ourselves? No, I agree with Joseph. I think the word I used earlier, kind of this cultural imperialism, uh, that the, the, the values that are exported around the world from the United States have a, a serious impact and they do carry influence. Uh, I spoke, uh, and especially on the aid and the foreign assistance, uh, two nights ago, I was uh, having a conversation with a pro-life activist in Ecuador, and she said her government was under a lot of pressure from the United States uh, when it came to COVID-19 relief. Uh, you know, the United States has provided some assistance uh, to countries around the world uh, to battle the pandemic, and kind of under the table, uh, kind of that backroom talk was, you know, really, we would really like it if you guys would uh, liberalize your abortion laws. And so that that's really the reality that, you know, we, we every election time in the United States, we say elections have consequences. One of those consequences is that under the Biden administration, they have really been pushing uh, abortion overseas. We know that one of the first things President Biden did was repeal the Mexico City policy that prevented uh, funding going towards the promotion of abortion overseas. And so that kind of pressure um, is definitely being felt uh, in this area of the world. And I think it's just important for us as Americans to realize uh, that our elections do have consequences uh, beyond just what happens within the boundaries of our own country. 
Uh, unsurprisingly, I don't think we will hear much outrage about the United States threatening to withhold COVID aid unless abortion policies are changed. Uh, but in a recent administration, threatening to withhold aid for any reason uh, was problematic. But there's something interesting about this because at the same time that you are highlighting the drift left by many South American and Central American countries on the issue of abortion, the United States is actually moving in the opposite direction. We are seeing a record number of pro-life laws at the state level. We think uh, 2022 is going to be the year in which the Supreme Court overturns Roe versus Wade. So we're going to be moving away from the radical abortion policies that have dominated the United States uh, since Roe versus Wade was decided. What are we to make of this, that Central America is moving left while we are moving back at least toward the middle? Well, and that certainly is the hope. And uh, what's really neat about these last couple of days, Joseph, is that about 75 Americans representing about 35 to 40 organizations, including Family Research Council, uh, came to be a part of these festivities. But to have these uh, meetings to strategize and collaborate uh, with these uh, Central and South American uh, leaders. And what's really uh, encouraging is to see even the delegates from countries that have liberalized their laws, uh, they're looking to the United States with excitement, uh, hoping that this Dobbs case uh, will indeed uh, overturn Roe v. Wade. And so I, I you know, it's what I actually had a, a, a unplanned opportunity to speak briefly to the Guatemalan president myself after the unveiling of the statue. And I just thanked him for his courage. I told him that he was setting uh, an example to the rest of the world uh, on this issue of life. And other folks, uh, Joseph, who I've talked to, they are looking to the United States, hoping that we once again will be a, a moral leader on the life issue. And hopefully that day is coming. Uh, they, they're grateful for uh, the Americans who came down here to encourage them and support them, but they are hoping that America can once again be a, a moral leader on this issue. Uh, but just really grateful to see Guatemala take this stand. And, our, and the hope uh, from all the delegates that are gathered around here is that Guatemala uh, can hopefully, they're declaring themselves the pro-life capital of Ibro America, uh, can have a ripple effect in this region. Ronald Reagan referred to us as a shining city on the hill. And I think for Americans who don't often travel overseas or who haven't spent time overseas, we can um, be unaware of the significance of how just how significant what the United States does is around the world for good or for evil. And, and that's just what leadership is. When you are in leadership, what you do affects other people. And that's Part of the reason why it's so important for the American church to not be silent, to not be apathetic, because it isn't just about what happens here. What we do here sends signals to the rest of the globe about what's appropriate, what's right, what's the best thing to do. And we have a real stewardship opportunity and responsibility for that authority. Now, you've also talked about, we mentioned the fact that the that Guatemala became the 36th country to sign the Geneva Declaration, which is relatively new. Tell us about that and why that's such an important statement. Yeah, the Geneva Consensus Declaration was really spearheaded by Valerie Huber uh, when she was at the uh, Department of Health and Human Services under the Trump administration. And the Geneva Declaration, it's only two pages, and it just simply states that there is no international right to an abortion and that abortion should never be seen as a method of family planning. Uh, so now 36 countries have signed this declaration. Guatemala signed it uh, in October, uh, so just a couple of months ago, which is really exciting. You know, the, the festivities and the ceremonies that we've had in the last couple of days have been really fun. Uh, but it's not just a show. It's not just rhetoric. Uh, Guatemala is really wanting uh, to send a signal to the world. That's why they signed the Geneva Declaration. It's worth pointing out, unfortunately, that within the first week or two of the Biden administration, uh, that uh, Biden withdrew the United States from this declaration, but it's still going forward. Other nations are still signing on uh, because that's that's briefly, Joseph, an important point to make that the leaders down here have told us they, they don't want to be bullied. Uh, they don't want to be told blacklisted or blackmailed. And so that there's strength in numbers. And so that's why uh, other countries are still being encouraged to join this declaration uh, to really build a coalition uh, for life and for 
Ford family uh, that opposes abortion, that opposes the liberalization of marriage laws around the world. And so there's 36 nations, and Guatemala is the most recent. Uh, and Lord willing, Joseph, one day the United States could uh, sign that document again uh, to, to be that shining city on a hill uh, that you mentioned Reagan once talked about. And we expect that we will. And David, also, uh, just to promote your stuff, a lot of it has been translated into Spanish. One of the reasons that you're there is because the FRC resources, including the Center for Biblical Worldview, are serving the Latin American and South American world. Uh, how can people find those? Yeah, just really privileged that there's been an opportunity to distribute a couple thousand copies of our booklets, helping people think biblically about life and marriage and sexuality. Uh, they're in English and Spanish. FRC.org slash worldview is the place anyone can go uh, to access these documents, give them to a pastor, give them to a, a leader in your community, and let's think biblically about all these issues uh, that the Bible addresses. FRC.org slash worldview. David Clausen, so glad that you're there. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you, Joseph.